So I request now our uh, next speaker, Dr. Reza Hamid, sir. Thank you very much. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible, Hello? sir. Yes, okay. sir. You are audible. So uh, respected chairperson, and uh, first of all, I would like to uh, express my heartiest thanks to the organizer for being given me this opportunity to talk in front of such an uh, August gathering. So to me, the responsibility and trust it is to talk on is the long acting rational choice among the benzodiazepines in alcohol withdrawal syndrome. So we will be exploring uh, various uh, benzodiazepines uh, in, uh, in relation to alcohol withdrawal. So uh, in this talk, uh, we will be talking on the various types of benzodiazepine and uh, we'll be uh, with consideration of choice of appropriate agents for the treatment. And we'll also explore the short acting benzodiazepines and challenges with the short acting benzodiazepines. And we'll see the preference for long acting benzodiazepines in clinical outcome. And we'll see, uh, see uh, American Society of Addiction Medicine recommendation uh, 2020. And we'll see the takeaway messages. In the classification of benzodiazepines uh, and uh, based on their uh, uh, action time, it could be short acting, intermediate acting, and long acting. And if we see few of the most commonly used benzodiazepines like diazepam, uh, chlorodiazepoxide, lorazepam, and oxazepam, then we can see uh, that uh, the onset of action is uh, more faster with uh, diazepam, then uh, chlorodiazepoxide, then lorazepam, and very slower with oxazepam. And if we see the half-life, then we can see that diazepam has having the longer half-life in comparison to oxazepam, which is five to 20 hours. And uh, if we see the active metabolites, then you can see that uh, digipam, chlorodigipoxide, they used to produce uh, active metabolites. But in case of lorazepam and oxazepam, they do not produce any pharmacologically active metabolites. And if we see the hepatic metabolizing, then this digipam and chlorodigipoxide are subjected to hepatic metabolism. And lorazepam and oxazepam, they do not have. And uh, if we see the route of administration, then uh, digipam can be given both oral and intravenous, low digipoxide on the oral. And for lorazepam, it could be oral, sublingual, intravenous, intramuscular, and for oxazepam, only oral route of administration is available. So uh, if we consider the, the choice of appropriate benzodiazepine, then we have to consider the that we require, we expect in the situation of alcohol withdrawal that the benzodiazepine should have a very rapid onset of action. It should have a longer duration of action. It should have smoother withdrawal mm -hmm. and uh, it should have very fever breakthrough symptom. It should have a very lower tendency on hepatic metabolism and uh, without, it should not have any pharmacologically active metabolites and the route of administration should be very easier and it should have a wide safety margin and very low abuse potential. So these are the points we have to consider before we start a, a benzodiazepine in alcohol withdrawal syndrome. So there are some challenges with the short acting benzodiazepines. They require very frequent dosing due to their very shorter half-life and uh, usually exhibit very greater propensity to become dependent and uh, carry more significant risk of adverse effect like if we do the abrupt cessation and very difficult to taper off the drug and manage the withdrawal syndrome and may not be effective in preventing or managing delirium treatments. Uh, the, if you see the current scenario with the use and choice of benzodiazepine, then you can see that symptom triggered therapy using long-acting benzodiazepine is most recommended. However, a study of routine hospital practice found that most patients received short-acting benzodiazepine, like uh, lorazepam. And studies have shown that the treatment for long period, high doses, short-acting benzodiazepines contribute to more severe withdrawal effect. So milder effects are seen with longer-acting benzodiazepines as they use for shorter period. So in the panel, there are some panel questions we can ask 
to the panel so with this i am asking this question to the panel those who are listening to me and watching this webinar that i am asking who is benzodiazepine okay. short or long acting is preferred for alcohol withdrawal management in indian clinical practice i will be coming back to this question later at the end of my presentation so i am proceeding to the next slide so shorter acting benzodiazepines have very poor clinical outcome many studies starting from on uh, uh, 1982 to 1989 uh, 2013 1990 that in various studies have uh, uh, shown that uh, in the dose breakthrough symptoms and rebound phenomena occur more frequently and more abruptly and with shorter acting benzodiazepine and this study in uh, 1995 has shown that rapid fall of benzodiazepine level due to shorter half life resulted in increased incidence of seizure and uh, another study in 1986 it shows that patients experience more pronounced reemergence of withdrawal symptom anxiety depression and their mean daily pulse rate was significantly elevated and in uh, 2013 uh they found that patients experience very higher incidence of seizure than patients treated with the long elimination half life benzodiazepine like diazepam or dorazepam and for lorazepam doses effects were of very relatively slow onset reaching their maximum at 30 minutes after the end of infusion so short acting benzodiazepines can cause withdrawal after stopping of the treatment this is a very important factor while addressing a patient with alcohol withdrawal Well, syndrome and a national observational study uh, in patients with chronic benzodiazepine consumption they have found uh, persons were mostly more than 65 years of age and uh, maximum length of benzodiazepine uses was 164 months it was found that 82% receive only benzodiazepines or allied drugs for this one or more drug with a short up like 21% this is one or more out of the study it showed that 545 out of 697 patient experienced withdrawal symptom after the benzodiazepine drug were stopped and 83% of these withdrawal symptom belong uh, to soc uh, psychiatric disorder and symptoms of insomnia anxiety were the most common and withdrawal symptom is an important obstacle with shorter acting benzodiazepines so scenario where long acting benzodiazepines are preferred over short acting benzodiazepines so preferences for long acting benzodiazepines and that is the sustained level of anxiety and in patient with active delirium tremens or seizure and with front loading and loading dose uh, in strategies and recommended so that the drug can use self tap and uh, preferences for short acting benzodiazepine you should prefer when there is episodic anxiety patients who are uh, when elderly and have significant liver function impairment then we should go for the short acting benzodiazepine and those benzodiazepine those are uh, bypass the hepatic metabolism like oxazepam or lorazepam and there are some limitation for the use of long acting benzodiazepines and that is i'm telling that the probability of that drug accumulation in patients with liver disease and we should be cautious in using benzodiazepine when the patient's liver function is compromised so long acting benzodiazepines have high lipophilicity uh, and that my earlier speaker has elaborated he has stressed on this point and longer duration of action and this is simply because that the volume of distribution of the diazepam or longer acting benzodiazepines is more than 10 times that of the lorazepam and it rapidly crosses blood brain barrier and it also releases uh, slowly to peripheral tissues and have longer duration of action and uh, lorazepam has lower lipophilicity and for that duration of clinical action it takes it in a single intravenous dose is bit slower so the short half life of uh, lorazepam can put a patient at risk of developing withdrawal seizure and uh, if it is not given frequently frequently and can make a discontinuation a very difficult process so long acting clor diazepoxides and and diazepam can theoretically uh, circumvent the fluctuation of benzodiazepine level and preventing withdrawal seizures and need for benzodiazepine tapering at the end of the treatment so long acting benzodiazepine reaches the peak 
effect rapidly in the treatment of alcohol withdrawal than the short acting benzodiazepines. So, so patients were initially loaded with intravenous diazepam 10 mg and then those patients were given uh, 5 mg of diazepam every 5 minutes till the patient were calmed down. And it was seen that every patient were calmed down without any adverse effect. And this uh, demonstrated that rapidly and repeated doses of intravenous diazepam for the treatment of severe alcohol withdrawal are safe. And when an individual uh, symptom-based approach to dosing is followed. And in fact, uh, authors and others have recommended even more aggressive intravenous diazepam dosing protocol, like uh, diazepam as long acting as, you know, seems seemingly aggressive strategies. And those are very safe. These are rapid uh, time to, peak, to take the peak of the diazepam and allow full evaluation of the maximum sedating effect of those dose before a subsequent dose is given. And in contrast, for short acting benzodiazepines, repeated dosing of lorazepam at a short in, in interval and that would not be safe. And because it does not reach the peak effect until 30 minutes after the dose is administered. So long acting benzodiazepine reduces the need for mechanical ventilation in patients. And this was seen in this study. And the study design was, a, it was a retrospective uh, pre and post study of the patients as at more than 18 years. And we were given escalating dose of diazepam and phenobarbital. And the outcome of the study was that the treatment approach used an early and aggressive symptom triggered dosing of intravenous diazepam. And that is the for patients experiencing severe alcohol withdrawal. And it was seen that there was no any over sedation. It took very less time on mechanical ventilation if required for ICU or any other critical care. And uh, it was seen that benzodiazepine exposure was very much reduced in this study. So chlorodiazepoxide has a long-acting benzodiazepines with slower onset of action, and it is effective. Next, if we see the chlorodiazepoxide in reducing the delirium treatment or seizure in various studies, we can see that multiple reports indicate that chlorodiazepoxide is non-inferior to other benzodiazepines in reducing alcohol withdrawal symptom. So chlor and uh, chlorodiazepoxide has also very less abuse potential compared to uh, those having very rapid onset of action. If you see the, uh, compare the benzodiazepines with abuse uh, potential, then you can see that diazepam, lorazepam, alpazolam, uh, chlorazepam, uh, oxazepam, they are having the more abuse potential in comparison to chlorodiazepoxide. And uh, chlorodiazepoxide is lesser ability to produce reinforced effect and subjective effect than the other benzodiazepines. So this is another point that chlorodiazepoxide is a safer choice in treating alcohol withdrawal syndrome. Uh, so, I'm a, so American Society of Addiction Medicine in Clinical Practice Guideline, if you see the alcohol withdrawal management and uh, that was published in 2022, this recommended for long acting benzodiazepines. And uh, clinical conditions uh, is to be uh, monitored that long acting benzodiazepines are preferred when the clinical situation demands continuous monitoring of the patient. And, if, and again, if we uh, opt for ambulatory patients and then when we do prescribe benzodiazepines, then also the longer acting benzodiazepines are preferred. And in patients with alcohol withdrawal delirium, the ease of intermittent IV administration of long acting medication is acceptable and effective. And that is, uh, diazepam would be the first choice. And to control the agitation, and when there is higher dose is required, and in this situation, there will be risk of accumulation of long acting benzodiazepine metabolites. And especially in patients with hepatic impairment and elderly patients, and should be monitored very closely. And the AOD treatment initiation and engagement for long acting benzodiazepines are preferred. And when available, medication should be administered intravenously. And the use of intermittent IV administration of, of long acting medication is acceptable and very effective in alcohol withdrawal syndrome. So if we see the long acting benzodiazepines uh, and the um, component of the mainstay therapy of management of alcohol withdrawal uh, syndrome, and that is simply because we can see the loss of features with the long-acting benzodiazepine, like smoother withdrawal, in, we can see this feature the most importantly, and when we we can easily taper off 
we can start with a bit higher dose and we can gradually taper off. And, and uh, this is possi possible only with long acting benzodiazepines. And uh, if uh, seizure and delirium tremens, these conditions are better controlled by long acting benzodiazepines. And if we, can, if we need to tackle the breakthrough syndrome, then also we should go for the long acting benzodiazepines. And if we expect very fast clinical action, rapid clinical action, then also uh, these long-acting benzodiazepines are a preferable choice. And uh, if we expect the longer duration of action, then also the longer-acting benzodiazepines are preferable. And only except for the patients with hepatic impairment, elderly or with pregnancy, then we should go for short-acting benzodiazepines like oxazepam, uh, which do not have any active metabolites. And if we consider the uh, rebound effect, then this rebound effect is uh, uh, very less with uh, long-acting benzodiazepine. Rebound effect uh, means the rebound anxiety. When the action of the drug is over, then the patient develops overwhelming. His anxiety is bounced back overwhelmingly. Um, this situation is very less consistent with long-acting benzodiazepine. And if we reduce the need for mechanical ventilation that uh, as I have shown in the earlier study that they have seen that uh, all those patients who were treated with long-acting benzodiazepine required uh, less or no mechanical ventilatory support. So at last, last what we have learned is that long-acting benzodiazepines are, uh, have slower onset and very longer duration of action and hence it provides very stable and sustained control of alcohol well syndrome. And long-acting benzodiazepines are very effective in preventing the risk of seizure and rebound symptoms, uh, which is associated with alcohol withdrawal syndrome. And they offer very smoother withdrawal and are uh, proven to reduce the incidence of delirium treatment. So, so these are the points that we can find uh, in this presentation and with this I conclude